Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I'm going to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. And then today I got a pretty interesting topic for you guys. And the topic is Kawhi Leonard becomes human, you know, with the Clippers lost to the Denver Nuggets. So that's what I want to talk about in today's video. But before we get into that, I want you guys to please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, also hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. And also for the subscribers on the channel, we, we're, we're, think, we're thinking of launching our premium platform, uh, you know, for the Dreamers Pro Show. So we have that link in the community. It's in the community section. So I want you guys to please go there and check that out and just leave a vote or comment because we want to know your thoughts and opinions on this. We're trying to get as much feedback as possible. So we're going to put the link in the description below so you guys can definitely check that out and make sure you please just vote and just leave your thoughts and comments, whatever you think, because we really, really appreciate the feedback that you guys give us for the community. So please make sure you go ahead, go ahead and vote on that. And it's in the description below. So let me get back into the topic here. So essentially what I'm going to do is because I saw the game, um, you know, I saw the game. I, I, I And what I did is a, I have a comprehensive breakdown on the entire game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys, you know, sort of a breakdown of the game and then give you my closing thoughts uh, and what I think is going to happen moving forward in this series. So um, watching the game last night, um, the first thing you notice is that the Nuggets came out hot. They came out hot in the first quarter and they quickly jumped out to a 30, 18 point lead. Now, the initial thoughts I had in my mind at that point was, are we going to see a letdown from the Clippers? You know, because the Clippers have the thing of, you know, sometimes they'll play really well. They play, they put a string of games together, but, you know, two, three games together when they perform exceptionally well, especially in the playoffs. And then they will have a letdown. Um, if you looked at, if you saw um, the performance that they had against the Denver Nuggets in game one, mostly everyone that saw that game came away with the same, with the same conclusion that the Clippers, you know, just pretty much outclassed the Denver Nuggets. Some had the assumption that maybe the Denver Nuggets were a little bit um, fatigued, emotionally fatigued coming off of a seven game series. So there, there was that narrative sort of fooling around in the background. So um, nevertheless, I did pick the Clippers to make it to the NBA championship. However, I didn't have them playing the Denver Nuggets. I had the Utah Jazz beating the Denver Nuggets. So I was wrong in that prediction. So this is sort of a fresh take for me and a fresh look because I didn't, you know, I didn't really analyze them playing against the Denver Nuggets, although they did play against them against the ball in the, in the, uh, early in the bubble. Now, one thing I was looking for was Paul George. Paul George came out in the first quarter and he was playing well, um, which is something I've, I've been, you know, been, I've been hoping for. And I had my eye on Paul George all throughout the playoffs. Now, Jokic, um, Nikola Jokic was just, he was showing his versatility in that first quarter. I mean, the guy had 12 points in the first quarter and he was just hitting threes and he was just hitting bottom of the net. And I was actually surprised because I hadn't watched a lot of Denver Nuggets games, but for a big guy, I mean, seven foot tall guy swishing, you know, three pointer. I mean, granted, if you're going to have Nikola Jokic beating you from three, you know that you know that the opposing team is having a really great game. So he came out pretty hot and the Clippers looked a little bit sluggish out of the blocks. It looked like they wanted to play. They wanted to be in the game like, you know, they it looked like they wanted to play hard, but things just weren't really clicking for them. And a lot of that had to do with Kawhi, which, with, with whom I'm going to get to in a little bit later. But they came out and they shot 71 percent in the first quarter. These are the Denver Nuggets. And in the last game, they were held under 100 points. So, you know, it, you know, one or two thoughts came through, were going to come through your mind. Either that was a fluke game or these guys are really, really good. Um, but the Clippers were getting destroyed in the first quarter. So going into the second quarter, it looked like the Denver Nuggets were desperate. And they needed to be because the Clippers are a really good team. And you go down 0-2 to them, man, and they get into their bag. Next thing you know, they would have probably won five games straight or four games straight in the playoffs. And then, you know, they become really hard to beat. So Nuggets came out a lot of desperation in the second quarter. In the second quarter but I like the way Paul George was playing, to be honest with you. Paul, Paul George came alive in the second quarter. And by the, second, by the beginning of the second quarter, he already had nine points. He hit some threes. And I was really happy with the way he was playing. Um, but the Nuggets were 8 of 12 from the three-point line early in the game. And I think... Due to the fact that they were hitting so many threes, I think it was putting the Clippers off, you know, it was, it was knocking them on their heels. And I've noticed in a lot of games that the clip, bad things happen to the Clippers once the pace speeds up. For whatever reason, the transition defense begins to, you know, fall apart and they start taking bad shots. Whenever the game speeds up, the Clippers usually get into a back and forth game like a shooting contest like they did with the Dallas Mavericks and crazy things can happen. 
So, um, you know, and they were making a lot of unforced turnovers and making a lot of bad turnovers. And at one point in the second quarter, the score was 54-33. So um, what I noticed was that the Clippers were trying to really slow the pace of the game by attacking uh, the basket, right? Which is the way you got to slow the, you got to slow the game down. You got to dump the ball in the post or either get to the free throw line and slow down the pace of the game, which was something that they were trying to do. Now, Paul George was very active, especially on the defensive end, which I love. We can say whatever we want to say about Paul George, but he's an he he is an, an elite on the ball defender. If you watch the way he defends in a quite different way than than uh, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George is quick. He has quick hands. He has he's he's extremely quick with his lateral movements with his feet. He can beat defenders to the spot. I mean, if you watch him play defense, it is amazing to watch Paul George play defense. And he was playing great uh, on the ball uh, defense. But, but but the Clippers, the thing I didn't like about them was that they were telegraphing a lot of their plays, and that's the reason why they had like ten uh, turnovers. You know, they were they were gonna. They wanted to pass the ball. They will telegraph the fact that they wanted to pass the ball. And the teams would be able to read that. Defenses were able to read that. And that's how, that's the reason why they had uh, so many turnovers. Now, Kawhi Leonard wasn't very good at all in the first half. He only had like six points in the first half, which is an aberration. Um, because if we look at Kawhi Leonard's numbers, these playoffs, the guy is playing 38 minutes a game, get, scoring um, 30 points a game, shooting 53% from the field. 28% from the three-point line, which I think is going to go up, but he's shooting 85% from the free throw line, getting you 9.1 rebounds, 5.3 assists, and 2.4 steals. So that was an aberration game. Nevertheless, he wasn't playing well in the first half, um, you know, which contributed to, to the Clippers not playing so well because when Kawhi Leonard is playing well, you know, it allows his teammates to play very free-flowing, and the game just sort of comes easier to them. Um, but, you know, credit to the Denver Nuggets. They were trapping him and double-teaming him. And I think this is, this is the most I've seen Kawhi Leonard um, double teamed uh, in his career. But what they're essentially saying is, hey, listen, man, let somebody else beat us. Let somebody else beat us because this guy is just too lethal. And if you see what he's been doing in the playoffs, he's probably been the best player in the playoffs thus far, uh, with the exception of last night. So they just made a concerted effort to double team. Now, another thing I want to say is Jamal Murray can play. Jamal Murray can play. OK, the dude can ball. And he was hitting some shots. I think he finished the game yesterday with 27 points. Obviously, it wasn't his 50-point, um, you know, outburst that he had in that first round. But the dude can play, man. And he, you know, he was he. he, he you know, Kawhi was making it hard, and these guys were making it hard on him. But he, he I mean, he got he had 27 points in that game, and he had like 16 points in the first half. Um, but uh, Nikola Jokic was just unstoppable, man. The guy had 22 points in the first half. And before you, before I can look before before I can look at it, the score is already 70-56. But I had a good feeling about the Clippers. I felt like they could still come back and win the game. I don't know why. I just had that feeling. So they went into the half down 14 points. The Clippers came out in the third quarter, and they were attacking the basket. Again, trying to slow the pace. And it worked because um, they were really able to slow down the pace. Paul George was playing really well. He had 15 points up until, up until that point. But the Clippers gave up two quick threes to Paul Millsap, which I didn't like. These are back-breaking threes. They, I mean, it seems like every time the Clippers wanted to put together a run, they would just have like a mental blunder and then things like that would happen. But I have to say, I have to say, if it's a Zubak, um, they ran a lot of the offense through him. And dude was, the, dude's, the dude's just been sensational, man. He had like 14 and 6 um, points by, by the third quarter. But the Clippers had a lot of opportunities to cut the game to under 10. But they just kept on missing easy opportunities. And at a certain point, I just kept on saying to myself, okay, are they actually going to be able to just get out of their own way and actually come back and win this game? But they couldn't put – they were putting stops together, but they couldn't capitalize on those stops, which is something I didn't, I didn't like. And they kept on missing free throws. Kawhi Leonard at one stretch missed two free throws, which is unbecoming of him. Montrez Hell um, missed some free throws. And I think the Clippers ended up missing five free throws in the, in the third quarter. It's five points you left, you left uh, at the line. So – um, which is that was that that wasn't a good sign. Now going into the first fourth quarter, Paul George continued to play well. Um, I think Paul George played a great game. Um, by the start of the fourth quarter, he already had 17 points, but he played on both sides of the ball. You know, if you look at Paul George's play, I think if I look at the box score here and I look at how many points he scored, yes, he scored 22 points, but he had eight rebounds, three assists. But the defense doesn't show up in these, doesn't show up in those uh, you know um, traditional stats. And I like the way Paul George played, to be quite honest with you. I think if Kawhi Leonard had played better, um, they would have won that game. Now, um, I kept on thinking to myself, though, however, that the Clippers were going to make a run, and they did. You know, they did because their defense began to pick up in the second half. I think they limited the Nuggets to about 18 points in the second quarter, in the third quarter, rather. So you can see the defense started to pick up, and the shooting percentage of the Denver Nuggets continued to dip. 
because I remember at one point they were shooting 71%, but I think they finished the game shooting 45%. So their field goal percent, they were playing much better defense in the second half of that game. Um, but it looked like Paul George and Kawhi Leonard were going to click in that fourth quarter, but they really didn't quite get there, although they had some moments in the fourth quarter. But the Clippers just couldn't get the game under 10. And when they and when they did, you know, the Denver Nuggets just kept on answering, man. They hit they kept on hitting big threes by Paul Millsap. And then uh, Murray stepped back and hit a three. And then Gary Harris stepped back and hit a three. And before you know it, uh, the game was a done deal. The score was ended up being 101 uh, 110, but I think the Clippers could have won that game. I think they could have won that game, but the storyline from that game is that, I mean, the major takeaway for me is Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard didn't play well. He is my favorite basketball player, but um, I think the reason why some of you guys take us seriously on Dreamers Pro is that we try to be as balanced as possible. Kawhi Leonard is my favorite player, but I have no problem um, criticizing him when I think is when I think it's um, when I think it's it, it's merited because or warranted rather because um, that way you people can you know viewers can say okay listen this guy is willing to you know he's not he's not a homer um, Kawhi Leonard could have played better if I look at his if I look at the his stat line I don't have his field goal percentage here but he scored 13 points got you 10 rebounds and he's a great rebounder got you a double double eight assists but he has to be better on offense and I think he will be better. Those are my major takeaways. I think Kawhi Leonard has to be better uh, because he's the best player in, in the world. You know, he's the best player in the world. And when he plays really well, good things happen for the Clippers. Um, and he has to be better. Now, what I think will happen is I think he will be better. I think the Clippers will win this series um, in probably six games or so. Um, but I think Kawhi Leonard would definitely play better moving forward. Because he's going to go back, I think he's going to watch some film, look at how they were double teaming him, and you know they stripped him a lot. They had a lot of turnovers, and I think Kawhi Leonard is reaching a point in his career when he's where he's starting to get some serious respect. When you start doubling a player that much, it means you respect him a lot, and I think it's something he's going to get used to and expect the double team. And I think he just has to make the right reads and just you know or either make a quick uh, quick move. Kobe got double teamed quite a lot, but he was still able to score out of the double team because if you saw a defender coming at him, kind of coming at him. For, uh, this way, he would just spin the opposite direction and shoot around his shoulder. There's so many things you can do to score out of the double team. So um, he just has to read the defense faster and go quicker instead of just holding the ball, waiting for them to double team him and then have an unforced uh, turnover. So I definitely think Kawhi Leonard is going to play better, but he was the reason. I think he's a major reason that the Clippers lost that game because if he plays well, I think that the entire demeanor of the team would be different. But the Clippers ended up playing well, and credit the Denver Nuggets because they played well. Um, you know, Nikola Jokic finished with 26 points. Murray finished with 27. Gary Harris with 13. Monte Morris finished with 10. The Clippers, they had, you know, um, Vita Zubak with 15 and 9. Paul George played well with 22, 8 and 3. Um, Lou Williams played with, it got you 13 points. John Michael Green was really good coming off the bench with 10 points. And Montrose Hell got you 10 points. So I think the Clippers are going to have a bounce back game. And I think in order for them to really have that bounce back game, Kawhi Leonard needs to play better. And I think he will. So what I want to know from you guys is, what are your thoughts and opinions on this game? Um, what are your thoughts on Kawhi Leonard's performance? And how do you think he's going to uh, perform uh, moving forward? So whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below because we really appreciate your feedback on this. Once again, if you like the video, please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. And please make sure you go and vote uh, uh, in the community post. We're linking that in the description below. Just check out what we. Um, just check out this premium uh, Dream, uh, Dreamers Pro platform. I want, you, I, want, I, want, I want to know what you guys think. So please leave your vote on that because we really, really, really appreciate that. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day. Peace.